Now, um, there's a whole bunch of different types of uh, addition reactions. What was the type of addition reaction we started with at the very beginning today? Hydrogenation. Hydrogenation. That's right. Hydrogenation because it's adding molecular hydrogen. So what would be a good name uh, for this? Well, first of all, um, what, who, who was the first person that attacked the double bond, an electrophile or a nucleophile? Who first attacked the double bond, an electrophile or a nucleophile? An electrophile. Because it was the hydrogen, and the hydrogen is an electrophile. So this is the type of addition that's called electrophilic addition. Hydrogenation is electrophilic addition? No, no, no. Hydrogenation is what we did here. Oh, oh, just the first yeah. part of it is hydrogen. Let's take our time. So, uh, so I'm running out of space. but. Uh, now, you, you came in while we were talking about hydrogenation, but hydrogenation hydrogenation is this reaction. Hydrogenation is when you add molecular hydrogen and a metal catalyst to a double bond. And that would give you this. So this is hydrogenation. It has nothing to do with this. This is not hydrogenation. Why not? Because we're not adding molecular hydrogen. It's true that we're adding one atom of hydrogen, but that's not considered hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is when you add two atoms of hydrogen from molecular hydrogen. So yeah, this is important to have labeled. This would be hydrogenation. And you can see that on your uh, sheet over here, hydrogenation. OK, so that was the reaction we talked about first today. All right, and um, by the way, this is not an electrophilic addition. Um, we didn't talk about electrophiles and nucleophiles here. This is just called hydrogenation. It's its own special category. But now we're talking about this reaction. And this is an electrophilic addition because the first thing that attacks, well, the whole thing is called electrophilic addition. The whole thing is called an example of electrophilic addition because the thing that attacks the double bond uh, first is an electrophile. So this whole thing over here now is what we would call electrophilic addition, which is a type of addition reaction. One type of addition is hydrogenation. And another type, of electro, uh, another type of addition is electrophilic addition. So that's what we have here, because the first thing that attacked was a uh, electrophile. Now, there's a bunch of different types of electrophilic addition. This is what we would call halo, hydro, um, halo hydrogenation. Halo hydrogenation. That should seem like a very logical name because we're adding a halogen and a hydrogen. So hydrogenation is when we just add hydrogens. Hydrogenation is when we just add hydrogens. This is halo hydrogenation because we're adding the halogen and the hydrogen. So it doesn't have to be HBr. It could be HI or HCl as so well. You can either call it electrophilic addition or halo hydrogenation. That's right. The best way to put it is um, halo hydrogenation is a type of electrophilic addition. We'll see other types of electrophilic addition later. Mm -hmm. So this is one type of electrophilic addition. Uh, and electrophilic addition is a type of addition reactions in general. OK. Uh, yeah, so it's good to know the names, although it's most important uh, to understand uh, the mechanisms here. So here we have halohydrogenation. Again, it should be an easy name to remember because it just describes who's attacking, a halogen and a hydrogen. All right, there's still some important things for us to uh, finish up with here. So um, the key thing here is the regiochemistry. And the regiochemistry is that the halogen ended up, did it end up on the more or less substituted atom? More. Yeah, on the more substituted atom. Have you guys talked about Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov? Mm -hmm. All right, do you guys remember then, if the halogen is on the more substituted atom, is that Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov. Markovnikov, you just have to have that memorized. Markovnikov when the halogen ends up on the more substituted uh, carbon, which is exactly what happens. That's yeah. why if you want to get it, like an OH on the less substituted one, then, oh, no, 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 that's what's boron. So then we'd have to use a different reaction if we wanted an anti-Markovnikov. That's right. So what's the synthetic utility of this reaction? Well, the synthetic utility is if you want to form uh, the more substituted, uh, if you want to put the halogen on the more substituted carbon, Halo hydrogenation would be a good way to go. If you want to put the halogen on a less substituted carbon, we might need a different uh, uh, mechanism that we'll get to in a second, uh, hopefully. Okay, so that's the regiochemistry here. Now, briefly, the stereochemistry here is not as important, but it might be tested. When this hydrogen attacks, is it attacking someone tetrahedral or trigonal planar? Trigonal. 
Trigonal plane. Trigonal planar. So is it going to attack from one or two directions? Two. two. So technically, we could get two different ways that the hydrogen could attack over here. Now, that wasn't important here because this was not a stereocenter. But if this had been a stereocenter, we'd have to draw two different intermediates. One where the hydrogen attacks from above, and one where it attacks from below. Or one where it, where it attacks from in front, and one from behind. Uh, because the hydrogen is attacking someone trigonal planar. So technically, the first attack gives you two possible intermediates. And then, what about when the bromine attacked here? The bromine is attacking someone else who's trigonal planar. This carbocation is still trigonal planar. So again, would that give us one or two products? Two. Let's go through the mechanism and write the products for this reaction. So our job here is to write the mechanism and then the products for this reaction. Looks like you're getting the basic idea. So, um, first of all, why is it reasonable to put the double bond at this tail? Because it's acting as a nucleophile. We've memorized that carbon-carbon pi bonds are nucleophiles. It's always important to make sure your errors are reasonable. Why is it reasonable for the hydrogen to be at the head? Because it's partially positive. Right. And this is reasonable because we know neutral halogens are good leading groups. Okay. Um, normally, we don't draw hidden hydrogens, but I thought here it's helpful to put in the hydrogen here. So I put in here. Now, Technically speaking, the hydrogen here could end up on either of these two, and therefore um, the uh, carbocation could end up in either of these two places. But both of you put the hydrogen on the bottom carbon and the carbocation on the top. How do we know that the carbocation should end up on this top carbon? It's more substituted. It's more substituted. And why does substitution stabilize carbocations? Because alkyl groups are electron donating. Exactly. <laughs> because alkyl groups are electron donating. That is, they're more electron donating than hydrogens because they have way more electrons than hydrogens. Okay, very good. So that's the regiochemistry. The bromine is going to attack with a more substituted carbon. So is this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov. Very good. All right, and that, so everything that you guys did up to that point was outstanding, and there was only one problem at the end. We always have to ask if we're forming a stereocenter. 